Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of the Bread for Soul Convos with myself, Sir LSG. I hope you are well. Thank you so much for watching this platform, for watching the show. And this morning we have uh, Ms. Tiani Maluleke, who is the CSO of Sampra. Um, uh, I, I still want to ask her what exactly a CSO is and she'll explain to us. Welcome to the show, ma'am. How are you? Thank you so much for having us. Um, yeah, we're so glad to be here this chilly morning. Yes, but at least like we are all working from home, you know, so uh, you could be in your PJs. Yeah, that helps. There. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Th that uh, helps. B before I ask you exactly what, what Sampra does, I want to ask you about, you know, your title at Sampra. Like, what does a CSO do? Okay, I'm the Chief Stakeholder Officer at Sampra. Um, I'm responsible basically for um, stakeholder relationships, um, marketing, uh, customer services, and now also the Sampra Development Fund. Yes, and, and, and you guys have launched that um, this past Tuesday. Um, when I was looking at a list of things that the fund plans to cover, was really ex I got really excited, you know, because... Um, especially at a time like this where musicians and and a lot of artists don't really have a lot of revenue spaces you know like the performance spaces have been shut down for some time and we don't really know when this thing is going to come back but um i was really excited we'll talk more about the fund a bit later as we carry on with our conversation but i want us to unpack you know um at a very simple level like to explain what exactly does sampra do Okay, Sampra is what you call a CMO. A CMO is a collective management organization. So what we do as Sampra is we collect or administer a music right called needle time rights. It's also uh, called neighboring rights in other parts of the world. So what that right is, it's the right of the recording artist as well of as the record company to get revenue, which I mean, we call royalties. Whenever the, the sound recording is uh, played in public. So if you are a recording artist, and what we mean by recording artist is someone who's a vocalist, a session musician, a guitarist, a producer, uh, anyone who made an audible contribution when a song was recorded um those are what we call our um performer members and obviously we know what a record label is mm -hmm. so um we collect every time their music is played by broadcasters we only collect from radio um so when radio stations play their songs if those radio stations are licensed then we collect and we pay needle time royalties to those um, those people or those organizations. Yes. Um, I think uh, people might know that there are other rights in uh, in a song, um, and we only collect for needle time rights. Uh, you also find in South Africa um, that you have an organization like Samro who collects for performing rights, and then you have Capasso they collect for mechanical rights. Mm. So, um, yeah. Um, so if someone is a member and applying for membership is easy. If someone wants us to collect on their behalf, um, they can contact us. I think maybe we can talk about that at a later stage. Yes. But I just wanted to give a basic understanding of what we do as an organization. Basically, as a CMO, we collect middle time rights and we pay those royalties to recording artists as well as record companies whenever they are sound recording. It must be commercially released music, so not jingles, um, yes. commercially released music. Whenever that music is played or by licensed music users, we then pay those royalties um, to our members. Yes, and um, um, I think also it, it's important to just make it clear with regards to needle time. Um, the way you, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, I'm just really testing 
my 2008 knowledge, knowledge from, <laughs> from college. But the way I understand Needle Time is that it's also a right that where musicians like session musicians, so somebody who's a bassist and playing for someone else's band. So let's say I've got a band uh, and I'm the main member of the band. The band is named after my name, Sereshim Band. And in my band, I've got different players. I'll have a pianist, I'll have a, a bassist. And I, when I take these people and record them uh, and record songs, the songs, even if the songs are my own songs, you know, the songs might be named after me, but they partake in the recording and they they will charge me a session fee. So if a bassist says, okay, I'm normally the rate is like between 1,500 or 2,000 rands. You pay 2,000 rands for the bass player for that one session, they record on the song. Um, but usually before needle time, um, when it comes to other royalties, um, whether it's the, the, royal, the performance royalties from Sambro or mechanicals from Capasso, normally the sessionists would not get anything else. And it would end That's where correct. it would only end where they get um, the session fee that two thousand rands that one point five during the recording day and and after that that's it for for them. So needle time um, gives you know like royalties to people like that people who are sessionists as well you know um, besides the main person of the of the song sessionists do now get royalties from songs they partake. Um, they took part in if i if i'm correct yes. yes yes that's correct and that's simply because of um how the the right is structured so you will remember with samro and capasso they represent composers and publishers mm. so uh, samro would pay the composer or the lyricist or the author of um a musical work Capasso would also do the same, and they will also then also pay the publisher of the musical work, and Capasso would do the same. So um, the right that we represent, we represent on behalf of uh, recording artists, including sessionists. Mm. But um, as you correctly put it, if you are a session musician, then you would get needle time rights um, royalties from us. Mm. Um, so yeah, um, the, the, uh, there is a royalty stream for sessionists as, uh, as well yes. uh, in the form of needle time rights. But it, um, in terms of a band, right, um, a band, people that are permanent members of a band, mm. um, we don't treat them like sessionists. So, for example, um, a band like Mafikizol, you know, um, they, um, the, two, the, 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 the two members are permanent members of that band. Yes. Or a band like um, Ladysmith Black Mambazo, mm. those members are permanent members of the band. So they would get, um, when we pay middle time rights, they would share equally mm. in the royalties. So if there's 100 rands and there are five members, they would each get 20 rands, just as an example. Yes, yes. Yeah. No, I understood, I understood. I hope people understand. Um, if you're watching on the on Facebook, if you're watching on my page or Best Beats or whichever page that we are cross-posting from, um, you can post comments uh, or questions if you if you don't understand something. But basically, that, that that's needle time. It's It's really an additional you could say you could call it an additional royalty stream for other people who are not necessarily getting royalties you know with other rights from other copyrights meaning the the performance or, or composers you know um so if you were like we explained if you were part of the band if you if you took part in the recording you will get needle time that's that's basically it. even if you clap hands even eh? if you clap or played the triangle you know you played something you will yeah. get so then because it, you made you made an audible contribution yes. so even if you just even if you clap hands in the song or um i don't know maybe there's someone that uh, wanted you to make a unique funny sound um in the song you also qualify um, for needle time rise as long as you made 
a, a, a sound yes. in the in the song you qualify for middle term right yes. and i think the other thing that is um good to note is that if you are a singer and you are also a songwriter it means now you have um multiple streams of royalty revenue you can you will earn royalties from us as sampra being middle time rights you still earn from samro being performing rights you still earn from kapaso uh, being in um, mechanical rights mm. but also if you if your your music is being played like you have a, a music video and it's being played you can also apply for membership um from risa mm. and you'll get the av royalties from risa so i mean there are quite a number of revenue streams that uh, singer songwriters can exploit mm. to just widen the income the their income streams yes yes and i think it's important to to note all of this you know because uh, most of the time uh, you we would only focus on performance royalties you know and not necessarily focusing on knowing that there are other streams of income to make from that one song that we make you know from that one song that that would be playing on on TV or on radio you can really maximize the amount of income that you get as an artist and it's important for us to um keep ourselves clued up about these kind of things you know so to know that okay in a song in one song how many rights are there and what rights are, are available to whom you know and stuff like that so i i do have to ask you though um this needle time where does the money come from because like yes we know if it, if it plays on radio that radio station is it that ra- those radio stations used to pay performance royalties to sambro and then artists would uh, composers would then get um their shares from there but is that does this mean radio stations are paying an additional fee that they never used to pay with regards to needle time yes remember sampra is 10 years old uh, <laughs> oh. just over 10 years i mean it was established in 2017 so um music users have been paying um or ought to have been paying uh, since the establishment of of sampra so we collect as as sampra we collect from uh, radio stations as well as retailers mm. so if you are a music user like a radio station you would pay um sampra for needle time rights to use uh, the sound recordings so that the recording artist can um benefit from the exploitation of their music you would also pay samro um their performing rights license and you'd also pay capaso for obviously making um the the copy of the the, the music mm. and you'd also pay uh, risa av um for music videos yeah basically yeah. so as a music user i mean if you're a retailer you're not using um music videos for example Yes. But if you are a broadcaster and you have a uh, radio stations and TV you would pay all for organizations those licensing fees. Yes. So yes the money is collected from music users mm. um and they pay the license because they're exploiting um uh, copyright. Yeah. And the owners of that the, uh, of the songs need to be compensated fairly. Yes. And what about nightclubs though? Uh, because uh, the nightclub thing, I don't remember nightclubs taking any cue sheets from me when I'm playing, you know, as a DJ. Um, are those are they liable to be paying uh, needle time yes. licenses as nightclubs? Yeah. Um basically every music user, if you're using uh, music in your business, whether you are controversially a taxi uh owner or taxi driver if you're playing music in your taxi by law you should be paying for the use of uh of that musical work as well as the sound recording you should be paying even nightclubs should be paying even you as a dj should be paying for exploiting 
other people's copyright. Yeah. I didn't even know about this. I, I think we need to get into this. So, so <laughs> <laughs> wait first. So you're saying uh, as a DJ, if I'm buying music and and I use that music at my gigs and I get paid, I should be paying some kind of license fee. That's correct. Because remember, even the broadcaster is buying that music. Um, even the retailer is buying that music and using it. So as a DJ, remember, as a DJ, your set won't only contain your own music. Yes. If, even if you are like a big DJ, you won't be playing only your music. You're playing a, a variety of music. And that music contains music uh, written by other people, so composed by other people. Mm -hmm. It contains music that has been recorded by other people. So those people whose music you are using should be getting royalties. So um, yes, we do license DJs as well for the use of um, other people's copyright. Yes. And, and so yes, um, <laughs> you owe people, you owe people a lot of money. So so tell me, <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I know there are some other DJs who play quite more than I do, you know. So uh, I, I I have comfort that at least I owe something, but not as much as uh, other guys do. But tell me, um, how is that then being regulated? You know, I, I want to ask you because I I can imagine that the regulation of this is not an easy thing to do. How do you regulate the music users? Because I, I, probably the radio stations, it's easier. The music, the, the retailers could be easier too. But in terms of individuals like DJs, how, how is that regulated? Okay, the regulations are already there. Perhaps you want us to talk about enforcement. Yes. Um, in terms of enforcement, we have tried as CMOs not to take people to court, but um, in the next few months, you'll probably see us going to court with um, certain individuals and or companies because they have not been paying their license fees uh, despite our uh, persistence and uh, negotiating with them to to pay the challenge is always um that litigation is an expensive exercise so we use it as a measure of last resort mm -hmm. but we also understand that we have been entrusted by our members mm -hmm. to protect their interest playing music without a license is theft people are breaking the law, you know? So we have to, at some point, take the legal route to ensure that um, people pay for the use or for the exploitation of others, of other people's copyright assets. Because if you are using music, you are deriving value. So for example, if you're a DJ, you're playing other people's music, you're getting paid, you know? For, for the work, but the person whose music you're using is not getting anything uh, for the use of their music. Whether you're a broadcaster, I mean, the same rules apply. I know sometimes you get the argument that, um, but we're also promoting your music. If we're playing your music, we're also promoting your music. Mm -hmm. But that is simply not true uh, because if that was the case, we would all work for free because most were promoting yeah. the, the organizations and the companies where we work, yeah. they're promoting our skills, they're promoting our talent. Mm -hmm. We are at work to showcase what we can do. The people who make a contribution to a sound recording, the people that write music, that is their work. Mm -hmm. They need to be compensated. So we cannot exploit people in the name of promotion. That is very unfair, especially when we derive, when as the users of music, we derive economic value, mm. um, you know, uh, from the use of that product. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, we are going um, to take enforcement to the next level, which is the legal route. 
okay yeah I, yeah i mean like um so l- let me get are, are you uh, let me just not even ask about a uh, making arrests and stuff like that but i want to understand then how can djs be licensed if i may put it that way with with sampra as a dj can i then apply for a license as a music user uh, or how, yes. how does it work yes so you can contact you can contact our licensing department um at licensing at sampra.org.za um the 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 annual license fee for djs is two thousand rands Mm. just about uh, about there so um you pay two thousand rands you give us your playlist we ensure that the people whose music appears on your playlist are paid uh, what is due to them are they getting paid from the two thousand rands yes so yeah i mean um if you're a dj and and uh, that's the fee that's that's what the people appearing on the on, on the playlist must share in that in that amount. But hopefully, obviously, you hope that a DJ the the the, the royalties are made up of um, the license fee paid by DJ one, DJ two, mm. DJ three, and so there is an accumulation mm. and real value to to the recording artist. Okay. No, I, I understand. I understand. So I if all DJs pay, if all DJs pay, yeah. the royalty amount is substantial. Yeah. But also, isn't it rather um, um, inconsistent to ask DJs or to have a fee of 2,000 rands as a flat rate where some DJs are playing once a month, another DJ is playing literally every four times a week you know and and but still using more music than the other one but the the license fee is the same yeah the challenge there became on the the administration of it it would be an administrative nightmare you know especially because we don't have mechanisms in place that track how many gigs DJ A has compared to DJ Z, for example, mm. you know. So that's why now um, I think across all the CMOs, the license fee is standard. Mm. Okay. No, that makes because sense. now it means we must take all the money that we've collected and spend it on administration, mm. which is not ideal. You know, we'd like to ensure that the maximum benefit is derived by the recording artist and not spent on um, administration fees mm, mm. okay no that makes sense i think um let's get into people who should be registering who should be coming who should become uh, members of sampra uh, who are those people like who should actually be registering with sampra as a member okay anyone who is a um, recording artist so if you are a singer if you're a backing vocalist if you are an instrumentalist if you are a producer you should be applying for sampra membership if you own a record company your record company should be a member of sampra okay so um, yeah those are basically the groups that should be members of sampra those are the two groups that we represent recording artists as well as record companies okay um i want to stick lean more towards the 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 artist side of things so um singers songwriters okay. and 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 so forth all the all the musicians who would partake in a, in a recording um so once they've registered with some prime and guys it's quite simple you know you do it online we will share the details towards the end of the show but it, it's fairly simple once i've registered on sampra what then takes place do i does everyone let's say there's a song and five people contributed in the recording of this song does every five every person every each of those uh, person people um notify you of the works you know or how does it work or just yeah. one person does it and includes all of them okay um 
to to register as, as a member is, is, is simple. You simply apply for membership and you become a member of SAMPA. For you to register your music. So once you are a member, you also then um, fill in a notification forms. It's also an, we also have an online option and we also have the Sampra app where you can do that. So if there are five people, so for example, I was a, a guitarist in a song that you were singing in, you notify yourself as, um, you know, the lead singer. I will also apply for membership and notify the songs where I was an instrumentalist. So ideally, everyone who took part in the song should apply for membership and should notify. So, so remember, when you notify, you'll also indicate who was part of the sound recording. When I notify as an instrumentalist, I will also indicate. So if there's a relationship between your notification and my notification, mm. it's easier. Mm. You know, ideally, that's what that's what should happen. Mm. But sometimes we do have instances where one person notifies on behalf of other people and then we'll still collect uh, for those people and we'll still pay their royalties as well. Yes. Um, no, I think that makes sense. Um, I think then it, it needs to get to a point where I think big, re big record labels would have certain systems in place and, and make it easier for their artists to kind of have things in order especially the the paperwork but um because also there's a lot of independent artists who i assume a lot of people who are watching this show uh like myself you know independent artists we do a lot of things on our own so i think it's it's also good to uh, advise people my advice would also be like if you're recording a song, if you've got however ma many number of people, like I record one song with a lot of different musicians in it, and I would have a sheet for each and every song. So in that sheet, I, I, I divide certain royalties accordingly. So I know in terms of publishing, so-and-so is supposed to get this percentage, this is my percentage, and, and so forth. And similarly, when it comes to needle time, you need to be really listing everyone who was involved in that recording and i think it's it makes it easier when you share that paperwork with all of the artists involved in your recordings so that everyone when they go and register or when they go and notify with the different organizations they notify accordingly you know they notify the same thing because sometimes you would see somebody notifying 50 percent royalties and the other person notifying 75% for the same song, you know, and, and it becomes a bit of an issue when, when it comes to how, how, how do people get paid. So I think it's very important yeah. for us, for all of us really to keep note and track of what we do. So we wanted to make a, a point. Yeah, I think it, uh, in t with us in terms of percentage, right, our percentage are kind, are kind of determined by the organization. So for for every track that we collect there the, there's a 50% split between the record company and the artist so 50% goes to the record company and 50% goes to the artist and in terms of the split between the artist um there um, there's a portion that goes to the featured performer the featured performer is the person who's whose name the track uh, is in and then you have then other featured performer so for example um i i have a song i'm the featured performer you are also featured in the song then you are the other featured performer and then there are then the other non-featured performers which are mainly the instrumentalists yes so um the the 50 50 percent split is already there and that was actually done to protect the artists because you know uh, there's always this narrative that record companies 
all, are always trying to swindle um, artists. So now we know record companies only get 50 percent, and then the other fifty percent uh, belongs to the to, to the record companies. But I like your idea of of ensuring that at every recording, when you are recording, you have the information um, pertaining to all the recording artists. Mm. And I think sometimes, you know, it can be and so challenging even to get hold of people. So you come, you notify, you say, these are the people that I worked with, but you don't have their contact details anymore. Mm. But I think if you are uh, doing a session and you have everyone's details there, you all agree, this, is, this, this was your contribution to the track, this is the instrument that you played. This was my contribution to the track. Mm. And you all have that. When you go and notify, you have that information. Because sometimes people forget. People work on so many projects mm. that sometimes they simply forget. Mm. You know, uh, people coming to notify us in 2020 about uh, recordings that they made in 1997. Yeah. I mean, they... They say you, your your memory is not that you know mm. that strong that you can remember every project that you have. But if you have the um, the right documentation and you have the information pertaining to the tracks, it mm. it really would help you as an artist. But it would also help us as Sampra from an administration perspective. Yes, yes, and I I see like a lot of people asking about um what happens with monies that are collected and are not notified like for works that that's not notified and i was speaking to uh wise man in google from capasso on the show as well like asking him the similar question is it the same with you guys like what happens with that money so if if you've collected money or or music users like radio stations or retailers have paid some money um for needle time for songs and but those some of those songs have not been notified what then happens with those funds yeah so um just like capasso we also do black blanket licensing for um uh, especially in respect of broadcasters we collect the money remember we have the playlists mm -hmm. as well because um not only do we get playlists from um the user being the broadcaster, we also have our own system, which is which tracks what every broadcaster is using at any given time in real time. Mm -hmm. So we have we have the information as well. So when we collect the money, we then do the allocation. Um, even if the music the, the 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 song is not notified, we we already we then allocate the money to the performer. So that when they notify, we pay them that money. Mm. If the performer has not um, notified, and I, I mean, we have an active team that will literally follow follow up and look for contact details of those people. Mm. If after five years, we haven't found the performer, the money goes back into distribution and it's distributed. So, um, yeah, this is why we always encourage people to notify so that they get their money before it goes back into the distribution pool. Mm, okay. No, um, uh, for me, I think that that makes sense. Um, so it's really important for artists, like, notify everything, guys. You know, like, don't have songs and mm -hmm. songs are out and you worked on material, but you did not notify, like, notify each and everything. Over notify, if I may put it that way. Even if the song is not mm -hmm. playing on radio, because that song That's might be playing on radio 10 years from now. You completely forgot that you took part in that song and you're missing out on that income. Like every cent counts when it comes to music. Your music is kind of like your your retirement annuity. And uh, I want to get into the, the Sampra Development Fund um, because I saw a retirement annuity as one of the, the, the points that were listed uh, as to what the fund will cover for, for Sampra members. If you could explain to us what is that fund, what's happening, how can we get some of that kachin? <laughs> yes, uh, we launched the Sampra Development Fund on 
Tuesday. Um, I think it's the most exciting thing that we have ever done as an organization, bringing real benefit to the lives of artists, impacting um, the lives of artists in, in the way in which the Sampla Development Fund um, is going to do. So um, the Sampra Development Fund is the CSI leg of Sampra. So it's a, a, a separate entity which, which was formed to do CSI on behalf of our, of our members. Uh, one of the things that the fund will be doing, as you mentioned, is retirement annuity. So if you are a Sampra member and you get to retirement age, you will then qualify to get retirement annuity. Uh, members don't have to make any contribution to the fund. Uh, Sampra will be making, um, will be paying the premiums on their behalf so that when they get to retirement age, they can get the annuity. I think that is um, quite impactful in that even in, in retirement, um, you will still be getting a, a benefit in addition to the royalties. Yes. We'll also be doing, um, the, the fund is also going to be doing, giving members funeral benefits. So if you as a member or your spouse or your children under the age of 18 um, pass away, you, your family will get uh, financial assistance from the fund to help with funeral arrangements. Um, I think we'll also uh, if you could hold on there, because I want to get a bit into the the retirement annuity thing. You know, um, how does it work? Like, so does each and every member? If you are a member of Sampra, does it automatically do you automatically get that RA um, set up for you that when you retire, you will get some money from that? Or how how does it actually work? Yes, if you are a member and you've earned at least five hundred rands. Um, in royalties, you qualify. So that's the majority of our members, you know. Mm -hmm. So when you get to retirement age, yes, you will get uh, an annuity for being a member. And, and so we will make the contributions on your behalf. And that, that those contributions, is it the same contributions for everyone or is it dependent on the usage of the music for, a set, for certain artists? Yeah, yes, in terms of uh, the annuity that the the member receives, it 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 does depend on on earnings. Okay. okay. It, it it depends on earnings. So the higher you earn, the higher your annuity. Okay. No, that makes sense. Yeah. And uh, let's get on yeah. to the other stuff then. Um, that the fund brings. Okay, I spoke about uh, funeral benefits. The third thing that the fund will be doing is education and training. So we've partnered with a number of um, institutions of higher learning who will be providing our members who would like to study the business of music. There are a number of programs at their institutions that are aligned um, to what we would also want our members to know. So if you want to know, for example, uh, how the business of music works, what is publishing, what to look out for, when you are um, um, looking at contracts, you know, so it will be quite business oriented. Um, but you'll also be exposed if, if, if you get a bursary to study at, at uh, one of these institutions, you will also be exposed to things like sound engineering and, you know, the academic side and the business side of music. Mm. So um, we encourage our members to apply if they would like to study. There are a number of options. We have diplomas, we have um, three month courses, we have master classes. So there are a number of options that are available mm -hmm. and members can choose the ones that they want to apply for. Mm -hmm. uh, they must meet the, the minimum requirements that the institutions have set up. Uh, and then they apply for a bursary from the fund. 
and we will then assist them with in full for um and the the, the amount that we will contribute will cover the tuition fees at the institutions mm. so i mean that, that's great my musicians are business people and we want to equip them and empower them to ensure that they run their businesses successfully and they know what to look out for, especially when it comes to contracts, because we know there are a number of people that have signed contracts that were somehow dicey, you know. So we'd like to ensure that they get the requisite skills that are needed for them to thrive in the business. And then the next thing or the fourth thing that the fund will be doing the fund will also be assisting um recording artists with the uh, um uh, music recording fees so you know when you go to record you need to pay for the studio you need to pay session musicians mm -hmm. in this respect we'll also be assisting uh, independent small record companies because you know, some of them also don't have the the funds mm. to um, put out a full album or even even a single because of the fees that are associated with recording. Mm. So we'll be assisting in full or in part with production costs. Mm. So I don't know if people are still pressing, uh, but if you need to press a CD or you need to put music out um, to a, 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 an aggregator, or you need to, to pay for an, a, any costs that are, that are regarded as production costs, even things like doing artwork um, for your, you know, for, 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 for your album, basically any production cost you can apply to the fund and if if your application is approved we'll be then uh, apportioning an amount to help with it mm. the next thing that the fund will also be assisting with is assisting artists who would like to travel locally and abroad so let's say you have a tour or you've got gigs out of the country we'll be assisting uh, with covering some of those expenses mm. because People sometimes get invitations to go and perform overseas, but obviously they're limited by the costs. Mm -hmm. Even something as simple as uh, applying for visas, mm -hmm. you know, that costs money. So we'll be assisting with that, um, those travel costs for local and inter international travel. Mm -hmm. One of our strategic objectives as an organization is the promotion of SA music uh, locally and abroad. So. We, we felt that this would be a way in which we would be able to contribute min meaningfully in this aspect. So that's what the fund will also be doing. Mm. Um, we'll also be assisting with sponsorships. So maybe someone wants to do a music workshop, they want to do music awards. Um, so this is also open to companies in the industry so if you're doing a music conference, you're doing a workshop, you can apply to the fund to get assistance in terms of sponsorship. So you don't have to be a Sampra member, but if you are in the business that is related to what you do, we do, mm -hmm. uh, you can apply for sponsorship. And if you your application is approved, we'll be able to then partner with you mm -hmm. and assist you financially with sponsorship yeah so i think i've i've covered everything yeah. right yeah, yeah you covered everything uh funeral benefit you covered all of the seven um um aspects and i think uh oh I yes no i forgot one thing we'll also be doing internships so yes. for people yeah we'll also be doing internships so people that go and study uh, or people that already have qualifications but they want exposure to the music industry. We are going to offer people um, internships where they can go to record companies and see what happens at record companies. They can get um, on, you know, um, they can get on the job training. 
at those institutions if they want to learn what we do as administrators, they can. So we'll have a rotation where people go through different aspects mm. um, and go through um, go through to different institutions to get on the job training to see what happens when you're talking about what when you're talking about, for example, sound engineering. What happens there? when you talk about music administration in terms of, for example, at a CMO, what happens there? What happens at, at, a, at a record company? What happens when you, in terms of event planning? So you, you, you also get exposure. So we'll have a six month internship program in place, which will also then support the academic programs that will also be exposing our members to. So yeah, that's that's what the fund will be doing. We are so excited as an organization to be bringing this to our members and we hope that it is well received by our members and that they they, they see the value that the fund um, aims to give to them. Yeah, yeah, like it's such a so so many things that you guys have done um that you guys are planning to do as well with this fund. I think it's such needed things you know for for the industry at, at, at large i do have to ask you though because i i can assume you will be getting you probably since tuesday have been getting an influx of of these kind of um whether it's uh, inquiries and and how how to yeah how to do stuff like how to apply i want to know like though how are you guys managing you know like all of the the influx of um applications that you guys will be receiving for this fund like how quick yeah, you mean, know I, i'm more interested with the turnaround times you know from application to um actually being accepted and and the fund taking place yeah i mean um uh, the fund is will be active from the f from the first of august so like next week <laughs> oh, september you um, mean yeah um the the first of september yes um sorry the first of ex uh, september th uh, the fund will be will start taking applications we have a team mm. uh we have uh we have a team that will be going through all the applications that will be assisting with information for people that need information so the team has been set up mm. you know to assist with turnaround times um, we also have uh, the Sampra Development Fund Board that will be doing the actual assessment mm. in terms of the selection criteria, who qualifies, who meets the, 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 the requirements. And we have the fund rules, which are basically the Bible mm. or the guidelines um, that will guide us in selecting the beneficiaries of the different programs. So I mean we have a full we have a full team we have we are ready so the turnaround times will be quite fast yeah no yeah I'm glad to hear that uh, just one last question that I do have to ask where do you guys get so much money <laughs> we actually don't have uh, a lot of money I think we the, the thing that we have done well as an organization is just uh minimizing our costs you know yeah. um we running we, we run the organization from an administrative uh, perspective with as much minimal impact on 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 co as far as cost is is concerned mm. you know we are running the organization as efficiently as possible the other thing is we are regulated we are we are the only cmo in the country that is regulated remember performing rights and mechanical rights they are not regulated as yet so in terms of the regulations imposed on 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 us our administration fees cannot go above 20 percent so we try to play way below the 20 percent fee so that we whatever we collect 
the majority of what we collect goes back to our members mm. you know because we understand that that is what we are supposed to be achieving we're not supposed to be taking uh, performers or, or recording access money and spending it on administration mm. so the money really comes from our efficiencies yes but i was asking yeah. specifically with the money for the fund like where does the money for the fund come from i mean we we collect um from users of music oh okay um so okay. The, the money comes from users of music okay okay so it's it, it's really the license fees Yes. There's no other source of income oh. for any CMO except from the users of music. Oh, okay. No, like our only source, our only source of revenue is uh, users of music. Uh, I thought you guys were were getting like some billions from somewhere that just injected this money into into the organization no, for you guys to be able no, to. No, 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 no. Remember, we don't get any any funding from government. Mm. We only get um, money from users of music. Yes. Wow. Yeah. yeah, no, uh, and you guys are truly efficient with your money. You know, like the government could learn a thing or two from uh, the way you guys uh, spend money. But I want to say, well, firstly, thank you for for taking this time, you know, and, and sharing this knowledge with us on, on this platform. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. And um, one person um, just to I think we could close it like this. Uh, Gabelo Hosea says, Let's go to school, let's go and learn and stop this thing of blaming record companies when things don't go right. Or blaming anyone. If you're a musician, this is the time, actually, not necessarily only for the fun, but the current times that we are in with the digital time in, and where an artist could literally upload their music on, at, on their own accord. You know, you don't need the label to be doing anything for you. You can do your own promotion on social media. You can create your own podcast. You can really grow your own following. The onus is really upon you. No one is stopping you. No one is blocking you from the industry. The industry is on your phone. You know what I mean, if I may put it like that. So let's take time to learn as much as we possibly can. And let's take those steps to ensure that we squeeze the back, you know, like we squeeze everything that we can get from that one song. All of the copyrights, learn about all of the copyrights and make it make it a thing, you know, and make it be that efficient. Every song has to have its own paper, copyrights, needle time, musicians that are recording on that song and everything else that's associated with that song. I think we can stop it here. Um, I just want to share information about Sampra. Um, where you guys can get uh, it's right there in the screen it's the email that you can send to info at sampra.org.za and the phone number 011-561-9660 the website is there physical address is there too i just don't know um Diani, are you guys open because I, I i know you're working from home but is the is the office open no we're not we're not doing uh face-to-face -face consultations now um yeah we'll wait until it's safe to do so but yeah, like you said, people can get hold of us. The best way to get hold of us is just to download the Sampra app, apply for membership on the app. If you're already a member, notify us of your tracks uh, via the app. Uh, also, you can use our, um, you can also apply on the website. You can also use the email address that you gave to members. Um, the, the Sampra Development Fund website is also up. So if people want to get more information on the Sampra Development Fund, they can go to uh, samprafund.co.za. And, and, and that's already running right now, samprafund.co.za. It's, it, it's up. Yeah, it's up. Okay, cool. All right. Anyway, thank you so much. And thank you for those who are watching. Um, I hope you guys learned a lot. Um, please tag somebody who might learn as well, who needs to learn from the conversation. Share the video so more people can see it. Otherwise, let's remember to stay creative. Peace.